Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to do a project called Search and Replace. So to, we want to perform a search and replace on the sentence using the arguments provided and return a new sentence. The first argument, so this guy, is the sentence to perform the search and replace on. So in this example, a quick brown fox jumped over, whatever. Second argument is the word that you will be replacing. So this is what we'll search for. So it'll be, we're going to be trying to replace the word jumped. And the third argument is what you will be replacing the second argument with. So the after. We're going to put leaped. So instead of jumped, we want the result to be a quick brown fox leaped over the lazy dog. So we want to preserve the case of the first character in the original word when you are replacing it. Ooh, that's tricky. Uh, for example, if you mean to replace the word book with the word dog, and it should be replaced as dog. Interesting. Cool. Well, let's just get the first thing handled where we're going to be dealing with that, and then we'll handle the uppercase uh, at the end. So um, I'm going to set the result equal to here, and so I can console log this. Uh, result. Okay, so right now all we're doing is replacing the string. So, I mean, this seems like a great opportunity to, to split the string into an array of strings, right? His name is Tom. I don't see any situations here where we can't just split the word with a by um, finding the spaces. So we could say the we're going to let the string collection equal the string dot split with by and we're going to split it by um, a space. So whenever there's a space, we're going to split, split. And then so the string collection will be a quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Those are individual strings within an array. And once we have an array to work with, we could go. Um, yeah, let's first off, we'll do it in a for loop. So for we're going to let i equal zero. i is less than uh, the string collection dot length. And then we're going to iterate i by one each time. And then, well, let's console.log this. And then we can console log the string collection at position i. And we'll not, result, not log the result right now. String collection at i. Oh, here we go. I need to have this. I've got it in brackets. It needs to be like that. Okay, so now we're going through and eat, we're, we're printing out this. So what we want to do is find out the before word, right? So is um, this equal to, what we're looking for is jumped. And so here we want jumped to be true. So we want to say, uh, is the string collection equal to before? So this is going to be false, 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 true. False, 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 false. So now we've identified the position. So we can create a conditional statement around there. So if um, this is the case, then what do we want to do? We want to say uh, the string collection at i is equal to before. Oh, is equal to what? We want to make it so it's equal to leaped, which is being passed in as after. And then we return the uh, string collection. But we don't want to re just return the string collection, right? Because if we return the string as a collection, we return it as an array of strings, which is not a sentence. So we want to join the array using spaces. And now a quick brown fox leaped over the lazy dog. And if we run the tests, we see a lot of them pass. But um, here what we want to do is this should return, let us get back to more algorithms. So algorithms needs to be capitalized. So we need to do some sort of a conditional statement in here. So we could say, <clears throat> how do we say that? Like let's console.log the string collection again at position i. Um, and how do you check to see, well, let's actually use here we want, this is an example of the one that we're trying to work on. Now, his name is Tom. Uh oh, my replace. His name is Tom, and then we want to have Tom, and then John. 
His name is John. Okay, so what's happening here is we're console logging Tom. That's we're iterating through here, and then once we get to Tom, we're replacing it with John. But John needs to be uppercase. So how could we say is Tom uppercase? So we could say string collection at position i at position zero. That'll give us the t, right? And then is that equal to um, string collection dot to uppercase? That'll be true, right? Because the uh, because it is like the capital T is equal to a capital T to uppercase. So we can use that as a conditional. So if, um, if we're dealing with an uppercase letter, then we can say, oh, I think it's capitalized. Okay, you've got to use two uppercase. In uh, some programming languages, you can use capitalize, but we can't do that here. So we want to say after. So what we're saying, if that letter is uppercase, well, what we want to do is we want to set after equal to um, after at position zero dot two uppercase. So we're capitalizing the first letter, and then we're adding on after dot slice, uh, you know, from position one onwards. And so then we're getting <clears throat> John capitalized. And if we run the test, that should pass all of them. Okay, cool. Um, I hope that that makes sense. I kind of jumped quickly through here. So this is basically like, check, is, <clears throat> is this like, so yeah, to refactor, we could say something like, we could extract this into a separate function. So if... We could call this one function like is letter is, no, word is capitalized. And we can set this and we pass in a word. <clears throat> um, instead of string collection at i, we can just pass in the word. And then we want to return this. So this will return true or false based on whether or not the word is capitalized. And we don't pass in word, we pass in um, string collection at i. And yeah, so this will still work. So if word is capitalized. Now, I've, another thing that I'm seeing is string collection. We're using this string collection at i multiple times. <coughs> that <clears throat> is a uh, code smell to me. I think what we should do is say we should let individual word equal <clears throat> the string collection at i. And then we can just use individual word throughout the, the code. And I think that that makes it a little bit more uh, explicit. His name is Tom. individual word. If the individual word is equal to before, that's right. If word is capitalized, if individual word, then after is equal to after at zero, after dot slice, individual word. After. Huh, what's going on here? <clears throat> um, I'm just going to run a console log in here just to see if this is printing out what we want it to. So what I'm doing right now is I'm running a console log in here to see if this is rendering true. Okay, so this is rendering true, which is good. And so now after is equal to after at zero dot, dot slice. So let's uh, console log after here, see if it's working. <clears throat> John, okay, cool. 
uh, it, we want it to be John with an uppercase. So after seems to be working here, and then we're setting the individual word to after. Maybe we need the string collection at I to be there. We do. Oh, that's right, because this becomes its own individual uh, letter. And so, therefore, we can't set the array <clears throat> using this, because this is essentially a duplicate of it. So, yeah, there's a way. Um, what's another way we could do this? Well, um, we're working with an array now, so we don't actually need to use a for loop. What we could do is say this string collection uh, dot for each, and then for each, we can pass it, we can do this as a helper function and then call this individual word, right? And then we don't actually need to have uh, this guy. And we, this was a function, so we pass it in like that. And now we have the situation, I is not set because well, now we can use the individual word down here. Uh, okay, so Tom, so it's not switching it out. We're getting, okay, so yeah, what we've got to do now that we're dealing with this um, higher level function um, is we need the, we're going to return the individual word. And then um, when we don't return, if the ind individual word's not the one to before, then we want to return um, the individual word. Oh, uh, return the individual word. But then here we want to return the after. My name is Tom. Okay, it's not doing that because what we need to do, okay, uh, we need to return this whole thing. And then, how does this work? Return after. To uppercase. Before, console log after. We don't need this anymore. It's undefined. Oh, you know what? We need to map it. Is that right? Yeah, okay. We were using a for each, but what we need to do is map, which causes it to go through each one. And then, so now we're just using higher order function and we're implicitly returning it. But we want to add the join here. Um, and we, we want to join it using uh, a space. So now his name is John, and this will probably pass the test as well. So this is utilizing higher order functions, which is, I don't know, to me it's just a little bit trickier. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that I would consider this to be an improvement. Um, another thing we could do is we could add another function here, a uh, capitalized word. And then pass in the word. Um, and then we could just take this, throw it in here, return this. And then instead of after, we can just say word. And then we can just say capitalize word of the, of after. Cool. And so now we're switching it out. And that might make it a little bit more explicit. Um, another way we, we could refactor this is use ES6 and remove the function from here and make it an arrow function. Uh, that'll work as well. And so, yeah, I mean, the first way that I did it was totally fine. And if you're not interested in refactoring it into different code, but I think that the reason that I'm going over this is because I think it's useful to see um, how to refactor into these um, higher order functions um, and then also how to extract code into here. So say this was a much longer program and you had a bunch of cases outside of this specific section, this specific function, and you wanted to be able to capitalize the word or check is word capitalized. I would actually change this to is word capitalized. Is word capitalized. And that'll, <clears throat> so is the word capitalized? Uh, if it is, so then we say, okay, well, if, if, the, if the individual word is capitalized, if it is, then we capitalize the word. And then afterwards, and then we return after. But if we don't, if the individual word is not equal to the word that we're searching for, the before, 
See, I would, I would actually make before, I would change the before, I would say um, word to searching for, uh, the word to search for. Um, and then, see, that still works. And then after, I would say word to um, replace, word to replace, word, uh, yeah. After is not very good, but you could just say, what would be a better one for this word? Word. Uh, yeah. The word we replace with, replace replacement word. That's it. And then so here, instead of saying after, we say replacement word. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, you should go with uh, sh short function names or uh, variable names. I think that what you should do is say, um, make variable names explicit. So here we're like, we're going to return, okay, we're going to map over the string collection and we're going to do it and we're going to check each individual word. If the individual word is equal to the word we search for, then, uh, and then if the word is capitalized of the individual word, then we do the replacement word. And we set the replacement word equal to a capitalized replacement word. And then we return replacement word. So you see, and this makes it, this is actually, it's starting to sound more like when you read the code, it makes a little bit of sense. Whereas if you just add before and after, you kind of have to have an entire understanding of the program. So now all this stuff isn't necessary. You know, you could have just um, taken the first way that I did this and that would be um, technically the answer to the question. So, um, but it's up to you. You guys, I think that it's helpful to go through and talk about code this way. Um, so yeah, run the test. They still pass. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.